Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP a little bit. But I'm going to talk about a lot of other things that are going on as well. So 1 trillion RLUSD have been transferred from unknown wallet to unknown wallet. XRP is ready to bridge RLUSD. So we don't know where this RLUSD came from or where it went. And it has a lot of people speculating that XRP's market cap is going to go to a trillion dollars like an overnight event. But it's speculation still. I want to see where this goes from here. Elon Musk is awarding $1 million every day until the election to random people selected from those who sign his petition to protect the First and Second Amendments. Take a listen. Which is that uh, we're going to be awarding a $1 million to, uh, randomly to people who have signed the, signed the petition every day from now until the election. And he goes on to say, you cannot have a First Amendment without a Second Amendment. And you could sign the petition at theamericapack.org. The website looks like this right here. The FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center allows you to report cybercrime directly to the Bureau in 2023. It received a record number of more than 880,000 complaints with an estimated total loss exceeding $12.5 billion. Think about that. And this year, it was much, much higher. We are going to continue to see this happen. And, you know, this is also part of the Great Reset, the cyber attacks, ransomware attacks. And even Microsoft reveals 600 million daily cyber attacks in alarming report. And they go on to blame Russia, Iran, and North Korea for playing key roles. Then they go on to say collusion between cybercrime gangs and nation-state actors is on the rise. They also tell you that you should change your password on your router at least once a month. Consumers running out of money. Former t Target exec offers dire warning ahead of Christmas. You know, every year we see these warnings come out, how people have less money going into the holidays. But do you ever take notice? The mainstream media news around the holidays always says it was a record year for shopping. Why do they do that? So who's right? Are people actually buying all this stuff? Or is the mainstream media news just pushing hype? In other words, trying to get people out there to spend more money. 48% of Swiss banks are planning or already conducting tokenization use cases, according to a survey conducted by the University of St. Gallen, Mint Mines, and Vision. The figure for embracing cryptocurrencies is far higher at 64%. Beyond tokenization and crypto, 58% of banks have plans for other advanced blockchain use cases such as trade finance or settlement. The consensus among the 19 banks that took part in the survey is that the potential for blockchain will be achieved in a two to five year time frame with a higher impact beyond the five year mark. However, beyond the five year mark, only 37% of banks believe the impact of DLT will be significant compared to 63% who view its importance as moderate. In the next two years, 11% of banks, both private banks, believe the impact will be significant. So they're saying the impact is going to be significant in a shorter time frame than a longer time frame. But take notice, they also talk about tokenization. And tokenization, at first I thought, wow, this is going to bring all these assets onto the XRP ledger. This is going to be absolutely incredible. It's going to push the price of XRP even higher. 
But then when you start to really look at tokenization, everybody's worried about CBDC and digital ID. But tokenization, I think, is even worse because they're going to be tokenizing every single thing around you. They could tax you through tokenization. You will be renting everything on a daily basis. Real estate is the number one asset class in the world. All private houses, high-rise buildings, office buildings, and other properties located in different parts of the world are valued at a total of $613.60 trillion. Real-world asset tokenization is predicted to be a $16 trillion industry by 2030. But if you listen to the World Economic Forum and the BIS and the World Bank, they're saying it's an $867 trillion market by 2030. So where is all that value coming from? Most likely private houses, high-rise buildings, even privately owned consumer or commercial real estate. Real, Realio Networks eliminates the barriers to invest in, trade, and leverage exclusive real estate, private equity, and other real-world assets through DeFi. Advantages of real-world asset tokenization. Removing mediators, divisibility, track asset history, safety, automation, blockchain solution, decentralization, immutable, and transparency. So they always tell you the good things about tokenization. And I also looked at tokenization like this. Say you want to borrow against your property. You could tokenize your house and maybe borrow against 10% of it. Just put 10% of the tokens out into the market and then later buy back those tokens. But I think they have a bigger plan for this. I think your house is going to get tokenized by the government because you see what the EU is doing right now. The EU is proposing a centralized asset register, a comprehensive database designed to track citizens' assets across the EU. The proposed register would encompass a wide range of assets, such as real estate, bank accounts, securities, vehicles, art, and precious metals. Also, your Bitcoin. Because they labeled Bitcoin as a store of value on purpose. And you see how the EU is now going after Bitcoin. The ECB just put out a massive write-up around Bitcoin. They said it's in a bubble. It's a Ponzi scheme. And they're using Bitcoin to, take, to use retail investors as exit liquidity as well. But they want you to list all of your assets with them and they plan to tokenize those assets here in the united states they already know what you own because they, when you bought your house most likely it ended up on a tax return that information is still stored at the irs it's also stored at your local courthouse here in the u.s but how could they get your property from you this is another way U.S. national debt just broke $35 trillion for the first time ever. It's higher now. $103,827 in debt per U.S. citizen. Think about it like this. They could call in that debt and you might be, you might have zero debt. You might have perfect credit. You might not be a person that racks up their credit cards, but that debt is still yours. And the debt was created by our own government. So say they were to call back the $103,827. Most people don't have that laying around. So now they have no choice but to allow the government to tokenize their property and make that income back by putting your, to your, your tokens out there on the market and have other people invest in your tokenized real estate that you own. That's one way. Here's another way. CO2 capture is a failed technology. 
The very industry that should be paying for cleaning up emissions is instead pocketing billions in public money that should go to transitioning to renewables. Carbon capture is not the answer to the climate crisis. Now, we didn't get to the point where carbon credits are a big thing yet. That's going to boom, and it's going to boom very fast. But I wire buildings in my day job, you know, in my business, and we have to stay up on code. And I always have to make sure I'm running the right wires inside of walls. And I read through the code book, and the code books are now putting in there about carbon emissions, using different types of insulation, using different types of siding on houses. Later, all they have to do is tell you, you have to buy some sort of overpriced carbon capture unit that gets put on your house. And most people won't be able to afford it. And once again, they'll say, well, we're going to tokenize your property. We're going to put those tokens out in the market and we're going to make money until you can afford that carbon capture unit on your house. I'm just showing you ways that they can do this. Nothing more. And, you know, I've been giving a lot of thought to this because we always looked at tokenization as the next big thing in blockchain. But is it good for us? You know, the everyday working person, the average government citizen, U.S. citizen, U.K. citizen, wherever you live in the world, is it going to be good for us at the end of the day? I don't think so. There's a reason BlackRock wants to get involved with tokenization. Elon Musk has been very vocal, you know, as he's going on this tour, talking everywhere. And this was great. He says, I think the value of a college education is somewhat outweighed. Too many people spend four years, accumulate a ton of debt, and often don't have useful skills that they can apply afterwards. You know, a lot of people go to college, they rack up all that debt, and they end up not even getting a job that requires their degree. Take a listen to this. I, I also think that like the, the, the value of a college education is, is somewhat overweighted, you know, and I, I, I think it's... Uh... Too, too, too many people actually spend, spend four years, accumulate a ton of debt, and then don't, often don't have useful skills that they can apply afterwards. And I think um, I have a lot of respect for people who work with their hands, and uh, we, we need elect, elect, electricians and plumbers and uh, carpenters and, you know, that, that's, that's a lot more important than having incremental poly, political science majors, uh, I think. Um, you know, so it, I, I think we should just not have this idea that, that uh, to be successful, you need to have a four-year college. That, that is simply not true. Well, that's part of the system that you're trying to break away from. You know, go to high school, graduate, go off to college, graduate, get a job, buy a house, work until you're 65 or 70 years old, and then retire and then die. And that's always the path that they put you on from an early age. Now, because you're crypto investors, you're breaking away from this system. And that's why these politicians in Washington hate crypto, because it allows you to break away from the system that they created for you. You are going against the system by investing in crypto. Elon also said this about the voting machines. Take a listen. I'm a, I'm a technologist. I know a lot about computers. And I'm like, the last thing I would do is trust a computer program. Um, because it's just too easy to hack. It's too easy to add just one line. Um, and it's really difficult to hack paper ballots. So, uh, you know, it's in, in person voting with, with uh, you know, pr proof of, yeah, with, with ID, which, by the way, Every country has, I mean, like almost every country that, that has democratic elections requires in-person voting with voter ID. This is, we're, it's super weird to not have that. Um, I think that's the only way to effectively uh, address fraud. Um, you know, given that we are, we are we are today, I think we just need 
uh, a very big margin of victory. You know, there's, there's, yeah. So what do you think? Do you agree with Elon Musk? Here's my idea on this. I think everybody should have off on election day. And you should go and vote in person and bring your ID with you. This way, there's no chance of fraud. Everybody showed up and they voted. And it should be a holiday. Everybody should get off on election day. Now, some people would say, well, people would take the day off and they would never go vote anyway. So be it. Give everybody the day off. Most people would go out and vote. You know, most people rush around after work so they could get to the polls to vote in person. And, you know, we are at a crucial time in the United States in many ways. First of all, we have innovation being held back in this country right now. They're trying to crush crypto. And, you know, crypto is the one thing that can really push the U.S. ahead. Innovation has always pushed the U.S. ahead. So think about it. Anybody that doesn't, that isn't pro-crypto is just anti-American, in my opinion. Because you should want innovation. You know how many jobs crypto is going to open up in the United States over time? And beyond that, you know, we are also pushing through the fourth industrial revolution. Other countries right now are getting the upper hand on the United States because of this. You know, when Ripple left the U.S. and started becoming a massive global company, look at all the countries that welcomed Ripple with open arms. Now, there's rails set up in every single country around the world for XRP to run on. Actually, if you look at it in a certain way, the, U the SEC did us a favor as XRP holders because Ripple expanded more during this case than ever before. And now all we're waiting for is XRP to go live on all those rails. And all of a sudden we will make a lot of money, you know, and then beyond that, we're going to start to look at passive income. We're going to look at a lot of different options for our crypto as the price of XRP goes higher and higher. Once institutional adoption takes place, that's going to open up so many options for crypto holders because these companies are going to onboard to crypto and they're going to be looking for ways to make money as well. You're going to be able to get returns by putting your XRP to work for you. Think about it, a monthly check just because you were smart enough to buy XRP early. That's what's coming. But until it all happens, stay patient, stay positive, and let's get rich together. With that said, I'm gonna wrap up this video. I wanna thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.